Hello, welcome to a devlog. Um, it's been a real long time since the last one, and that's because I, I haven't done any work on any games. Um, I've had much more important things to do, and I knew that was going to be the case. I wanted to do a kind of a final devlog to say, yep, yeah, there's going to be a big pause, and didn't manage to get around to it. But, um, but here we are. I'm still not really... I'm still busy with other stuff and have not been developing properly, so uh, I don't really have anything proper to show. But um, if I let too much time go by, it's going to become increasingly difficult to make these, so um, I thought I'd do one. Uh, also, this is the last opportunity I have to record something while I'm living here. Like I'm doing this in between dismantling a wardrobe and clearing my desk so I can dismantle that. So, uh, I thought I'd do one also to like mark the end of this period before moving. Um, but yeah, because um, because I knew I was going to be really busy and not capable of doing any of this, any of my previous projects because they're too complicated. I thought, uh, like an idiot, I'll start a new uh, game, which will be a real simple um, little thing that. I can I can squeeze in whenever I have an hour between other projects, and of course, of course, of course, it turned into the most complicated thing, and um, so I haven't really been progressing on it because it's too complicated to fit in with other stuff. Anyway, I'm going to show it to you um, with the caveat that it is not ready to be shown. Uh, the UI in particular is just a disaster area and there is stuff broken in the background that means it might crash or whatever. So uh, I don't see any reason not to start though. Uh, if I can get it working. Yes. Okay, so it's, um, it's in this aspect ratio because I was thinking that it could be a mobile game. Uh, probably it's not going to be because I don't have any experience making mobile games and don't... Uh, so, let's just say that it's not going to be. Maybe. We'll see. Um, so, this game is called Fully Automated Luxury Space Logistics. And um, that's what it is. This is a little intro. You're a logistics AI in space. You serve the space communes. If you're useful, they will trust you. The more they trust you, the more useful you can be. You ship surplus goods to where they need it to get shipping. Um, so, that's it. Uh, you have these little pods. This one is idle at the moment. Um, they are located in places. Uh, this one is in a, a place called Pnum. We can look at the places. Uh, so we have a we have a network. Uh, I've been like real uh, inconsistent with what they're called. Here they're called communities. I called them communes in the intro and in the code. They're mostly called locations. And um, I was just talking about places, right? So uh, they are communities or communes. Um, and you know planets and space stations and things like that. So we've got three: Mir, Nis, and Pnum. Um, these are um, connected by the fact that they are in your network and you can ship goods between them. Um, so you can look at contracts that are available at the place that your pod is at. There are three listed here. And um, they have a, a time that they're going to take to complete. Um, they have a danger, but I'll cover that later. And um, you will gain trust by doing them. So let's just take one that's, uh, well, these are both long, but that one's dangerous. So let's take this one because it's a little bit more than the other. So now that pod is gonna travel from one place to another and fulfill the contract. Uh, although I didn't really wanna show this, but let's, uh, let's, let's get rid of that. Um, it's now gonna take ages to get to its destination. Um, so, what I really wanted to do was two things. I wanted to create an idle game. I'm a fan of idle games. I, I think they're cool to have running in the background and while you're doing other stuff. I really enjoyed Universal Paperclips. Uh, probably my favourite example of an idle game from fairly recently, a year or two ago, I would guess. 
Um, and oh, so, so yeah, I wanted to make an idle game. And I also wanted to make uh, a space trading game. You know, where you have your little cargo ship and you, you buy goods here, you transport it there, sell it for more, eventually upgrade your ship so you can buy more goods, and etc. Except I wanted to make uh, one which didn't involve money, uh, a post, post-capitalism, post-scarcity kind of thing, like where you're shipping goods around, but there isn't any money changing hands. I don't know if I've really achieved that, but that, that was the idea. Um, so to combine a space trading game with an idle game. And so that's what you do. You can acquire pods. Let's get another one. And you tell them where to go and they fly there. And if you, um, if you complete this contract successfully, if you deliver the goods that the communities need, then you earn trust. And because you're an artificial intelligence, kind of untested at the beginning, you're pretty limited in what you can do. The more trust you get, the more you are allowed to um, use more pods, ship stuff to more locations, and um, have access to Mm, well, not really access to, but a greater variety of goods will be given to you. Uh, a greater range of freedoms will be given to you. Um, so when they when they arrive, they go into a phase called turnaround because they they have to be prepared for the next trip before they go. Um, there are more contracts available now. Uh, in the background is running quite a complicated system for generating these concept contracts, or probably too complex um, where like the um, locations communities have things that they produce and things that they lack and um, they put out requests for goods and other communities try to fulfill them uh, if they produce if a community is producing too much of stuff they will sort of announce it to all the others and there's like a sort of central hub you don't see any of this as a player so uh, maybe I should be being much more simple about these contracts. But anyway, let's let's actually uh, send a couple of these, otherwise we'll never have enough trust to, to do more stuff. Um, so yeah, the, the pacing and the timings of all this stuff is still up in the air. In fact, just recently changed it to make them slower, and I don't know where the, where the levels are. Um, so this is something that can happen, is that all of the all of the locations have a certain amount of danger associated with them and um, also in this case this is not associated with the location also just bad things can happen to the pods and something breaks and you get these little sort of mini choice adventures very mini choice adventures uh, in the middle of the, the trip uh, at the beginning of the game you don't get many choices but you can you can upgrade your pods in such a way that um, they gradually acquire more possibilities in these stories. So this is this is like a pod upgrades screen. They have two types of things, upgrades and modules. In the real game, this is not all going to be available to you right at the beginning. Uh, you will have to uh, earn enough trust to be allowed to modify the pods and things. And um, this is not all implemented yet, but and the interaction is a little bit fiddly. So all of these things are um, different types of permissions that you can get as an AI if you have enough trust to increase the size of your network. Oh yeah, I have tool tips, but they don't fit on the screen necessarily. Um, increase the size of the network, the size of the number of pods you have to gain access to different levels of pod upgrades and uh, more advanced pods. And then there are also some, yeah, this, this needs to be fixed, this uh, this panel. Uh, and also there are all these single upgrades you can get to purchase sort of particular things. For example, it will be possible eventually to um, automate all your pods. You, at the beginning you have to click to send them 
back and forth, but eventually they will be able to choose their own contracts, etc. etc. Um, so anyway, there are two types of upgrades, upgrades and modules, and the upgrades increase their stats. They have a bunch of stats, the speed and the capacity, etc. You can increase those with upgrades. The modules uh, sometimes negatively affect the um, the stats. These are all the low level modules, so they're they're going to do that. There are there are more which are better later, but they um, they protect you against uh, dangers in space. So you can use these to um, to gain more choices in the choice adventure. Uh, oh look, this thing needs. Uh, needs choosing. When the results at the beginning of most of these dangers is that you the pod gets damaged, the cargo gets lost, and you lose trust. Although at the moment um, I don't think I've actually implemented the system for losing trust because I haven't worked out how to deal with potential negative trust issues. Like, I guess you just lose the game if your trust goes negative, but that's pretty harsh maybe because it's likely to happen at the beginning. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so anyway, the loop is kind of this. No, you you pick contracts. You wait for them to go to the thing. You upgrade your pods. And the other thing you can do is um, you can increase the number of communities in your network. You can connect to more. Um, you start the game with three, and you can you can look at a list of other ones that are available. Um, I don't currently have enough because the first one costs two trust. I've got 1.45, um, but you can get them. And this is not all implemented, this, this UI system here, um, but it was a first stab at all the information that I'm going to want to put on this screen, uh, which maybe even is a bit too much. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, let's send this pod off, keep us earning trust. Where are we? Oh, another one. This is happening really often in this game. At the beginning of the game, this is supposed to happen somewhere between 20 and 30% of trips, which again, maybe it's too, too high. Um, and we're not getting the interesting ones either, so we'll see. Um, so yeah, this is the first stab at the information that I want to display on screen, but it's not all, it's not all plugged in, it's not all working. Uh, locations have a danger level, one or two, and the types of danger that happens around them, and when you get the incidents in the trips, they, they're split into mm, six, six different types, I think, uh, based on what's happening in the location. This is important because later, when you, when you have more trust available, you'll be able to customize your um, pods for particular routes. Like, um, you're never gonna be able to install enough upgrades in a pod to protect it against everything, but if you have it working between three or four different locations, all of which have a specific type of danger, then you can protect it against those and you will, you will get a good favorable outcome from the majority of the incidents that happen in the trips. Um, another thing that's going on over here uh, with a little error in the UI where I don't uh, truncate this number enough, uh, as, you, um, as you fulfill contracts for places, aside from the, the trust that you're getting in general, um, you get trust locally that when you deliver things that they this location needs or when you take things that um, they've overproduced you can uh, I'm just picking these at random because I'm I'm thinking of, I'm talking um, but there are better and worse ones in that list so as you fulfill these contracts you gain more and more trust within the local community at the moment it's called local trust but um, I think that's a bad name because it's confusing like your global trust with your local trust. And that will eventually allow you to expend some of your resources to, um, um, to help the communities. No? And in fact, um, there is a sort of a, 
the end strategy of the game, the, the end goal of the game, is not to move goods around necessarily. Uh, it's to increase the the happiness of everybody, right? Like every um, every location has a happiness level, and up here, this number, which doesn't have a tooltip or an icon or anything, is the average happiness of everybody in the in in your community. Just like um, delivering goods and, again, we're getting boring incidents. Just fulfilling contracts will, um, will increase the amount of, let's get some more pods so that things will get going a bit better. Um, just fulfilling contracts will um, increase people's happiness, you know, receiving the things they need. Um, or seeing the goods they produce chipped somewhere where it's needed helps uh, the happiness of the communities. Um, but also there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole event system going on in the background. Again, way too complicated for what is necessary for the game, I think, because most of it is not revealed to the player. So this very basic URI at the moment is showing the events that have happened at this location, which can have a positive or a negative effect on happiness. So you see the, the construction materials put to good use thing. This is that this planet has overproduced construction materials. They have been shipped somewhere else uh, where they were needed. And so that produces happiness in the place that produced those materials. There have also been some uh, negative events going on. And all of these, every uh, location has this separate uh, event history ticking along uh, pushing the happiness up and down we've kind of got unlucky here I think that um, the there are more negative events but possibly the fact that we've been getting all of these um, incidents and that means failed deliveries is having an effect so the lack of a luxury one in this list that is that they needed uh, a good or you know the, yeah, they needed a good and it didn't arrive. The delivery was failed. So it makes people less happy. Um, this hasn't been balanced yet, but the idea is that um, it's going to be relative, it's going to be hard or impossible to um, push the happiness up just by fulfilling contracts. And eventually what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to spend that trust that you're gaining in the individual locations uh, in order to um, provide things for the community which don't directly benefit your um, your shipping arrangement so the these buttons give you uh, they're not I haven't implemented this system yet so these buttons will give you um, you know, uh, facilities that you can construct in the locations, um, which might be community centers and uh, public parks or gardens and that kind of thing, that um, will benefit the community and won't benefit you. Uh, but will push that happiness up. Like every time you construct something uh, good for the community, it puts more um, like positive events into these into these lists. Um, yes, see this this place is not getting the food that it needs. That's a, that's a problem. That's because of the the failed deliveries. In fact, what I should be doing uh, if I was praying this properly, because. Um, so, because these two locations have a danger of two, that pushes up the possibility of bad things happening. Um, so, I can, when I get an idle pod, um, sensors is an upgrade I can get for them. Uh, and that will mean that now this has a, a greater chance of avoiding bad things on the, on the route. That's the sort of the goal of sensors. Um, so it's a very much like um, making choices about these upgrades is, is really important. Um, 
And as you go, you unlock more different types of pods that you can use. Uh, yeah, I think I already mentioned there are more upgrades hidden. Uh, you need to you need to get permission to use them. Um, and look, this is sort of approaching its maximum. So at this point, we could start um, investing in some upgrades for the for the locations. And oh, these these things do work uh, theoretically. Yes, they do work. But um, so you can sort this list of locations. Let's get another one. Um, Thumb ruddle. It's a good name for a thing. Um, so what else? Let's get thumb ruddle. What else? Yeah, I don't know. There are another sort of track that I want to explore with this game is sort of um, I, don't, I don't really know how to concisely uh, put this together, but um, I want to have complex systems where the information is provided to you but um, because of a lot of different things interacting you can either so it's meant to be an idle game so you can play as I have been playing right now which is just picking a random contract and sending them and eventually automating these so that they um, so that you don't even have to choose the contract. You can play like that. Um, but also, if you want to, there is a more optimal way to play where you are picking the, the contracts that will gain you the most trust and provide the most benefits for the locations. You are shaping the network that you have um, in such a way that you... Um, uh, you have more possibilities to gain trust. For example, when you get a new location, they have a... The network is built up gradually in, in physical space, in virtual physical space. Um, uh, and the bigger it gets, the bigger the distances between the locations are. And you earn more trust the further away you, you take good. It takes more time, uh, but you earn more trust. So by, you know, if I was going to choose this one, uh, it's much further away, it gives me more opportunities to um, trust. But maybe some of these other things are, are worse. Again, I haven't really tuned the, the location generating system yet, so all of this looks pretty similarly. And also the UI isn't representing everything. I, I haven't sort of plugged everything in yet. Uh, why am I not getting this? Let's get that one. Okay, I've just reached a limit, so... I've got five locations in my network now and I can't get any more until I get permission to get more. And getting permission uh, would cost a lot. Ten trust. The moment I've got two. Um, incidentally, you never lose trust. This is all the trust that you've gained and this is the the trust that you, you're not currently using to have the number of communities and the number of pods that you, that you have. Um, so yeah, this uh, video has gone longer than 20 minutes, so I guess it's probably uh, time to stop. Um, like I say, I'm not really spending a lot of time with this, I have other things to do. Um, but I wanted to make this video as a, as a marking point between uh, periods of time. And um, who knows, maybe at some point I'm going to be able to crack the whip at my own back and actually push one of these games through to completion. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I don't know when the next one will be, but um, I'll see you then. Toodaloo.